will take it on the 7. Lewis is up to the 10, the 15, the 20, and he's dropped right there at the 22-yard line. So check in the offense for Minnesota, and the Gophers will have the offensive edge up front of about 8 pounds per man. Carlson gives off to the fullback, Barber, and he's hit right there at the 49-yard line. A low kick. Taken by Jolly at the 21-yard line. He fumbles the ball, but there's a flag on the play. Jolly signals for a fair catch, and Minnesota tackles him. That'll cost him 15 yards. Right on line from the 21 to the 36. That was deep and read close. The I formation. Mitchell and Clayton wide out to the left. First and 10 on their own 36-yard line. There's Clayton handing off to Edwards. Edwards is hit at the 40, the 41-yard line. Picking up on the first play is Dan Edwards coming into the ball game against five opponents. He carried the ball for the Mesa Blue 94 times, picking up 483 yards. That's an average of five yards per carry. Michigan has its second six on her own 40. B.J. Dickey handing off to Reed. Reed picking up two, three, four, and down to the 45-yard line. Game heat like the Mesa Blue pigskin 44 times against... Two tight ends and a balanced line. It's third and one. Edwards deep. Reed close. B.J. Dickey under center. They need one. He pitches off to Edwards. Edwards gets the first down to the 49-yard line. First and 10 for Michigan as they equal Minnesota in first downs. That's a 59% passing record. Michigan's second in the Big Ten in passing. There's a delayed handoff to Edwards. Up over the midfield stripe, the 45. First down to the 42-yard line. Remember, the series started on the 49. I said to the 42, that means he's about a yard shy. Two wide outs to the left. There is B.J. now handing off to the fullback, and he picks up two yards. Mr. Reed, Larry 10 for Michigan on the 39-yard line. B.J. Dickey looks at a five-man front. B.J. Dickey delayed handoff there to Edwards. Can't find running room. He makes running room for about a yard at the most at the 38-yard line. Otherwise, wide to the left goes Carter. At the slot on the left, wide side is Clayton. Edwards deep. Reed close. B.J. Dickey under center. Second and nine at the 38. B.J. rolling out for the first pass. Cox is on. Throws downfield. is caught down there by Reed at the 30. Reed picks up a first down out of bounds at the Minnesota 26-yard line. J. Dickey keeps, and he is eating the ball at the 24-yard line. Twin sets. This is a passing situation for the Maize and Blue. There's B.J. back. He's going to be rushed. He throws a swing pass out there to Edwards. Around the left side. Down to the 20. Down to the 15. First down. Michigan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, it's down there at the 15-yard line. Don't call it too soon, Eufer. Is there a flag on the play, Lundo? I see a flag, Bob, and the one official is discussing it with the referee, and it looks like an illegal use of the hands. It was deep, read close, Mitchell wide to the left. There's B.J. back for a pass, looking for a receiver, throwing downfield. Edwards can't hold it right in his hands. Clayton, Ralph Clayton, I'm sorry, it's not Edwards, 22, not 32. It was Ralph Clayton going up into the air. It was well thrown, Lundo. I thought Clayton could have caught that. Dickey drops back, cocks his arm. He's hit from behind. He's going to eat the ball at the 44-yard line. And he punts and is not blocked. It's high end over end. And coming down there on the five-yard line into the end zone, automatic touchback. But he didn't sneak in that third. Well, the thing about it, Bob, I don't think they had a rush on. And he did make a fine punt. He punted the ball high. And then it had the good hop and a good break for Minnesota. Otherwise, if our lineman was there, but it's... Wide to the right is Anhorn. They have four men in position to catch passes. Here comes Thompson in motion across formation. Barber gets the ball, and he's tackled, and he breaks the tackle, and it's hit at the 21-yard line. Second and nine. There goes Thompson in motion, and Carlson's back for fast Cox's on, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Jolly at the 24-yard line. Mike Jolly makes a big interception as Mr. Mike Jolly has just intercepted his second pass of 1979, giving Michigan's offense a great turnover here on the Gopher 25-yard line. Lundo? Bob, that was a great interception. He instinctively, Jolly, just has that little extra thing that you have to have, and when he reacted to that ball, he just took it away. It was like two fellas going for the ball, and Jolly grabbed it. Five-yard line. No score from Ann Arbor. Eight minutes remaining in the first quarter. There's a hand up to Reed. He slips at the 23-yard line. Reed trying to cut back in on the left side. Let's show you the athletic director. Did uh, Canham and Bo have the field covered yesterday? Yes, Bob, we're one of the only teams that cover our field. At Michigan State, they don't. Ohio State, they don't. But we cover ours the night before. Michigan worked out over in the practice area, and Minnesota worked out here, but it was covered again. Bob? Oh, Jay Dickey. So the field was covered, but it's a bit damp. Rolling out to the short sideline, and a quick pass down there to Clayton. He goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line. It was Reed, check, not Clayton. It was 23, not 22. Tight ends in the balance line. The I formation, Edwards deep, Reed close. There's a pitch off to Edwards. It's a high pitch off. He gets it, though, and keeps it and goes out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And seven on the go for 11-yard line. Two tight ends in a balance line. Edwards deep, Reed close. There's a six-man front, and Jay hands to Edwards. Isolation. Edwards is hit at the nine, and piggyback driven out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Right. Third and six. 
Here comes Clayton in motion across formation. This could be a pass play. Dickey rolls back, cocks his arm. He looks for a receiver. He throws down. It's too far. The intended receiver down there was Norm Betts, number 82. Right now, kneeling is, is number 10. That's Tony uh, B.J. Dickey. It's spotted at the 16, 26 yarder, and it's good! The field goal after 11 tries, they finally get one. Even a blind dog starts on May Corn once in a while, Lundo. Michigan 3, Minnesota zip. Over this, the Michigan Football Network. 20 to 35 to finish. The 20 to 15, get by Bundy. Just as he did two years ago. Just as he did two years ago against Minnesota when he took the ball for the first time and went 45 yards against the Gophers. Back, it was a year ago as a freshman. He ran 49 yards and that time he carried the ball 58 yards touchdown imagine that the first time Wolfhawk carried the ball a year ago against Minnesota as a freshman he ran 49 yards for a touchdown and here today the first time he takes the ball he moves 68 yards for a touchdown Michigan leads nine to zip five minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the first period B.J. Dickey kneeling at the 10 the Wolverines have got it together today there it's snapped by Lilja. It's spotted by Dickey. It's kicked. It's end over end. There it is, the old Bo George Patton Schembechler scoring hard. Two out of two this afternoon. Check one out of two this afternoon. I'm thinking of the field goal that was good for three points. And so Virgil has four points. Mr. Wolfhawk has six points. Michigan has ten points. And it's all coming to you. And we're going to pause. No, we're not going to pause because those referees are not pausing. They're moving that ball out. Now on the 40-yard line, Michigan breaks out, ready to kick off, and we see below us here on this sideline. Actually, that play took 11 seconds to go 68 yards. Comes Ali, he approaches, it's end over end. This is going down to about the two-yard line where Lewis takes it, fumbles it, picks it up, 5, 10, hit it to 15, dropped it to 21-yard line. P-A-G, Ann Arbor. This is Barber, and Carlson rolls out to the right, the 15-yard line, the 20, he's running, he did it to 24. There goes Thompson in motion across formation. The pitch is out from Carlson to Barber. He's hit right there at the 24-yard line. A gang tackle headed by Kurt Greer. And the quarterback, and that's it. Too much time. Boy, we could see that. The Cardinals Monsters check in the big gold country lads from so first and 10 on their own 38-yard line. There comes 21. That's Jenkins in motion, and uh, Carlson throws downfield. Incomplete. Almost caught by Ann Horn, and the man covering was Mel Owens. A beautiful job by Big Hulk, as his teammates call him. Pops back, cocks his arm, throws downfield, and it's caught at the 43, and he's hit right there at the 44-yard line. Minnesota will be punting against the wind, and they're going to wait. There it is. The first quarter is in the record books. Michigan 10, Minnesota zip over this, the Michigan Football Network. As he cocks his arm, he's hit from behind as he throws, and it is incomplete. They're calling interference on Jolly. They're going to call interference on Jolly at the one-yard line. They were in the end zone. The pass was weakly thrown. Bailey was the intended receiver. Simpkins put the pressure on Carlson. Carlson didn't have a prayer. He just threw it downfield. But Jolly had his back to the pass and to the passer. And so although the ball was nowhere near the receiver, Jolly was facing the intended receiver, Bailey, and you are not allowed to play the player. Formation, Barber deep and Thompson close. Here comes the man across formation. Now he's going back the other way, all of Southern California fashion. That's Anhorn. There's Barber, and he dives into the end zone. I think he has a touchdown. He does. Barber has his ninth touchdown of 1979 to this ball game. Michigan leading 10 to 6, but the Gophers now have picked up after having the ball in excellent field position. Three kneeling as Anhorn, attempting the extra point is Rogan, Paul Rogan from Farmington High School in Michigan. It's up in the air. It's end over end. It is good. And Mr. Rogan has done everything. His number is 100.69 after the call. There he is. Rogan kicks. Sidewinder deep. It'll be back in the end zone. Carter fumbles in the end zone. Drops back there. Automatic touchback. B.J. Dickey at quarterback. There's B.J. rolling out to the right. And he's up over the 20, the 25, the 26, the 27. And he's the hit. Mr. B.J. Dickey, the Ottawa, Ohio junior. Six foot, 188 pounds. B.J. Dickey rolling out to the left, pitches out to Wolfhawk, and he's hit by two men. He breaks the tackle, and he stops at the 27-yard line, picking up on the play about a half yard at the most. There is Wolfhawk deep and Reed close. Mitchell wide to the right, two tight ends and a balanced line. They need three yards. Wolfhawk is hit back there, and he's 
getting it. He breaks the tackle. Down at 35 to 40, the 45 to 50, the 45 yard line of Minnesota. And boy, he liked that. Look at him nod, Lundell, like a young colt out of a barn, isn't he? He broke that tackle like a bull with a bee in his ear. He outsprinted two would be tacklers, and then coming across on the angle, a man hit him at the midfield stripe, and he still dragged him four more yards. And then he got up and sort of snorted like a horse after he just jumped about 10 barriers. That's two tight ends in a balanced line, first and 10 on the go for 46 yard line. Reed up over the 40, down to the 35, the 32, the 31 yard line. Lawrence Reed moving in there beautifully behind the blocking of Becker, Liljan, Arbesnik up front. Wolfolk deep and Reed close. There's Wolfolk in isolation. He's down over the 25, or check the 27 yard line. Reed's in front of him, Dickey's in front of him. He gives to Wolfolk again. Wolfolk slips right there at the 26 yard line. 10 to 7. Dickey rolls out to his left. He's going to pass right-handed. He throws off. It's caught. He goes, no, sir, out of bounds. He catches the ball. Clayton didn't stay in bounds as he caught the ball. And so it will be a fourth down and five. When he throws downfield, and he can't hold the ball. Going out of bounds is Norm Best at the 14-yard line. He couldn't hold the ball, and Minnesota takes over. The Gophers' defense stiffens here. Minnesota's right back in this ball game as Michigan leads 10 to 7, but the Wolverines moved downfield all the way down to the Minnesota 26 yard line and could not move any further. Two slots are Thompson and Borgwin. Here comes Thompson in motion across formation. There is Barber with a ball, and boy, he's hit right there that time. And three men coming in there Needham along with Turgovac, but Needham made the big tackle. Here comes Jenkins in motion across formation. Carlson's back from the 40-yard line. He slips, he cocks his arm, he throws the pass. It's complete out here to Borgwin. The midfield strike down to the Michigan 40-yard line and knocked out of bounds. Mr. Jenkins and Borgwin. There goes Jenkins in motion across formation. Barber has the ball. Barber's down to the 40 and hit at the 38-yard line. Boy, Barber really running hard in there. Second five on the Michigan 38-yard line. There's Carlson rolling out to the right. He throws the pass down there, and it can't be held down there by number 83, Borgwin, as he's hit beautifully by Canavino. Canavino hitting him simultaneously with the ball, and he couldn't hold on to the ball, but Canavino held on to him. The two wide outs are Bailey and Anhorn. There goes Jenkins in motion across formation. Carlson's back, Cox's arm, throws the pass, and it's intercepted by Michigan at the 25. Jolly makes his second interception of the game, his third of 1979, and another big turnover, and you can see the Dobbers with the maize and blue as Michigan takes over, and we're going to allow our announcer to pause 15 seconds for station identification over this, the Michigan Football Network. We're back in the tailback, B.J. Key rolling out. He's keeping the ball. Now he's running over the 30, the 35, and down to the 38-yard line. B.J. Dickey's longest run this year was 35 yards against Northwestern on the pitcher-keep situation. That time, they were all, they being Minnesota defensemen, were all covering Edwards on the pitch out, and B.J. Dickey, boy, he used his head. A lot of poise on that one, Lundo. He faked the pitch out, tucked it, and moved down for a first down to his own 38-yard line. 1954 dental class, the 1959 dental class, and the 1969 dental class. It's Out to the fullback, he's over the midfield side, down to the 40, down to the 37-yard line. Beautiful blocking up there by our best as Lawrence Reed, the fullback, came back on the reverse. Now that is a new play put into Michigan's offense today. We conceived well up on the chalkboards over there in Ferry Field this week. First, there's a hand up again to the fullback. He's down to 25 to 20. The 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He's into the end zone. I know, sir, they're claiming on the one-foot line. Lawrence Reed, who's coming into the ball game for Michigan, had picked up six touchdowns on his career, two running, two three-yard runs against Kansas and California for touchdowns. Go for the end zone, but the official claimed that his knee hit on the one-yard line. That's about all you can say, Lando, on that call. I tell you, it's simply a judgment call with a great effort on Reed's part trying to go stretching out, and when he came down, he actually put the ball in the end zone, Bob, but there's a judgment of the officials that he stopped on the, about the one-yard line. Well, this drive started uh, back on the 24-yard line on Jolly's interception. Now Michigan, two tight ends in a balanced line. Wrangler under center is Edwards deep and Reed close. There he is, Larry Reed picks up his first touchdown of the afternoon, and it happens to be his third touchdown of 1979 and the seventh on his career, and no youngster deserved to have his play called more than Reed did on that last one after moving that ball some 48 yards, or rather with 38-yard run to the court on the play that will show in the record book previous to the one that he was given credit. Five yards in four plays, and 
Tony Jackson spots it. Virgil attempts. There it is. And, and Michigan leads in the ball game 17 to 7. Virgil just makes it 15 out of 15 on the season on extra points. Two out of two over this, the very maze and blue Michigan football network. This is second and five on the 32. Anglers back for a pass. Throws downfield, and Edwell, Clayton can't hold the ball on the 17-yard. In fairness to Clayton, it was thrown low. Clayton had... Wagner goes out to the right. He's being chased. Now he pitches off the halfback, and Edwards is trying to pick up five. He picks up about three and a half to about the 28-yard line. Remember, the series started on the 38. It could be a first down. Wide to the left is Clayton. Edwards deep rebounds. Wagner at center. Under center at quarterback on the 28-yard line. Delayed handoff to Edwards. He's stripped up and knocked down at the 25-yard line, picking up about two and a half yards on the play. He's moved into Minnesota his first year. Wangler drops back, cocks his arm, plenty of time. Throws downfield. It's caught by Marsh at the 15, down to the 13-yard line. First down, Michigan. As Marsh, the number one receiver coming into the ball game for the Maize and Blue with 15 receptions against Northwestern, Notre Dame, Kansas, California, and Michigan State, picks up his second reception of the Minnesota game of 79, down to the Gopher, seven, or... was shaken up. Keith Edwards, the Grand Rapids, Michigan lad, wearing the maroon and gold, seems to have hurt his ankle. Quarterback, B.J. Dickey, is taken earlier in this quarter to the back. Here's Edwards up and Reed close. Two tight ends and a balanced line. There's a pitch off this time to Edwards down to the 10-9 yard line. Five, and is dropped right there at the four yard line. He came through on the left side. We hesitated because he broke the tackle at the seven. And then it looked as though he might burst through for the final seven yards into the end zone. Two tight ends in a balanced line. Third and one at the Gophers' four-yard line. It's Edwards deep and Reed close and Wrangler under center. He gives off to Edwards and Edwards cuts around to the five. He is hit right there at the five and thrown out of bounds. He does not pick up the first down. He does not move any further toward that Minnesota goal line. Crowd wants old George Patton to stay on the ground and go. And I think Wrangler is going to call timeout. He does. Now Dickey hands off to that. Stan Edwards picks up the first down and struggles to the one-yard line. The man you just heard over your radio speaker, Stan Edwards, took the handoff from Wangler on fourth down and one for the first down, fourth down and four for the touchdown, picked up a block on the right side from Mike Leone and Kurt Becker, opening up a hole, and Michigan has it. First and goal at the one-yard line, two tight ends in a balanced line. Edwards deep and Reed close. Wrangler under center at quarterback. Michigan leads 17-7. to seven. Wrangler goes rolling out to the right. Wrangler's going to keep the ball. Throws a swing pass up and out. And it's good to Lawrence Reed. Makes his second touchdown of the ball game. And Lawrence Reed picks up his first touchdown of his career. He's a senior. He had seven touchdowns running on his career coming into this ball game. He has made one touchdown on the ground today, and now he picks up his eighth touchdown as a Michigan player in four years, and it was a pass, a swing pass from the one-yard line to Lawrence Reed, who was freshman, scored one touchdown, and as a senior this year, he has picked up three touchdowns all in the ground, one earlier today, one against Kansas, one against Cal, and kneeling right now is Tony Jackson on the 10-yard line. It's spotted, it's end over end, and it is... Michigan's Virgil converting his third extra point. Put that together with a field goal and a touchdown run by Wolfhawk and a pass touchdown from Wangler to Reed. And you have Michigan with 24 points. Minnesota has seven. We have 31 seconds remaining in the first half at 25. Dropped at the 26-yard line. Missed wide to the right is Anhorn. At the slots are Thompson and Borgwin. Barber is deep behind Carlson. There goes Borgman in motion one way, changes his mind, goes back. Now they're going to throw to Borgman. No, sir, he's hit from behind, and he eats the ball on the 14-yard line. And the man in there who made the tackle, you can guess it, Kurt Greer, who has already had 13 sacks coming into the ball game and of some kind of a football game. There it is. That's all there is. There isn't any more. Michigan 24, Minnesota 7. Bob Foreman will be back along with Don Lund in just a matter of seconds now over this. The Michigan 24, Minnesota 7. Football Network.
there is Ragnar now. A look in pass. He's looking for the receiver. He's throwing down to Marsh. Intercepted down there by Minnesota at the 17-yard line. And the Gophers stop the Wolverines. It's Wittes, number four. Rick Wittes, the freshman. And it's caught at the 29, 30, 35, and dropped at the 36-yard line. There is Thompson in motion across formation. Carlson's back from the 35, first and 10. Cox is on. Has plenty of time. He's going to run with the ball. He's dropped for a loss at the 32-yard line. Second and 13 on their own 32. There goes uh, Jenkins in motion. Carlson out towards one, throws a pass. Way over the head of Borgwin. He almost tips it down and holds on to it, but it was way over his head. Borg on the Minnesota 16. There goes Jenkins in motion. Carlson is rolling out. He's back to his 24-yard line. Throws a pass, and it's caught at the 43-yard line. Short of the first down. Remember, the series started at the Minnesota 34. He puts Thompson in motion. Carlson takes him center. Quarterback sneaks for about two yards. He needed six inches. Carlson got about two and a half yards. He's up to the 45. He's down to the 41. It's Borgwin, not Jenkins, who caught the swing pass out in the left flat. Beautifully thrown and equally well caught. He was finally knocked out of bounds by Mike Jolly. So Minnesota into the air 23 times. They have completed 11. On AM 1050, WPAG, Ann Arbor. First and 10, Carlson pitches off this time to Barber. He's trapped, but he breaks the tackle, and three Wolverines are in there, and they make him eat the ball on the 45-yard line. He couldn't believe he ate the whole thing, but he did. Roar up, and it was Harris. Stu Harris, the strong safety wolf man. He was back. There's a flag on the play, and he's blocked for a loss on the 42-yard line of Minnesota. A sack by Stu Harris again. Two straight sacks in a row for that Wolfman of Michigan who really is being a very ferocious Wolverine at the moment. Here comes Jenkins in motion across formation. Carlson drops back, Cox's arm in his own 35-yard line. Throws downfield, it's underthrown and couldn't be held by Anhorn at the 45-yard line. Carlson will hand off to Barber. He breaks one tackle at the 25, but is dropped right there by a whole host of Wolverines on the Minnesota 28-yard line. He drops back on his rusty dusty as Borkwin pushes him. Simpkins looks at the official and says, look it, I'm very innocent, and I want to be penalized. I want that man penalized. Well, the official ignored it, so Simpkins gets up and starts roaring back into Borkwin and says, geez, I thought I could pull 15 yards, and since I'm not, I'm going to just get up and, and take it out on you myself. That's hardened and jolly. Right, Carter is taking it at the 32. He fumbles it. Minnesota will recover the ball, I believe, on the 32-yard line, but we can't tell. There were three Minnesota men, and it is a Minnesota recovery of a Michigan turnover as Carter had a good chance to catch the ball. He just couldn't hold on to it, and he popped it up. A 40-yard punt with no return, a fumble, Minnesota's ball in good field position on the Wolverine 32-yard. Has a 7-4 defense. There is a quick pass. A time pass into the end zone is caught. Touchdown. Beautifully thrown and caught by Bailey. That was one of those time touchdown passes where the quarterback drops back and he counts so many seconds. Meanwhile, Bailey, the split end, is going out into the left flat, right into that southeast corner of the end zone. And attempting will be the Farmington, Michigan lad, Paul Rogan, who has only missed one extra point. In this year, it's going Michigan 24, nine minutes remaining in this, the third quarter, over this, the Michigan Football Network. Number one, both freshmen ready to bring it back. Carter takes it, fumbles it out of bounds at the six-yard line. B.J. Dickey, evidently the bell was rung in the second quarter, but his head is clear. No fuzz in that youngster's head right now. He sets his team two tight ends in a balanced line. He is Wolf Oak deep and Reed close. Mitchell wide to the left. There's a hand up to Reed. He's down to the 10, the 11, the 12. Still on his feet at the 14-yard line. He had 141 yards up until that carry, and that time he picked up about nine yards. So it'll be second down and one as L.P. Reed, the fullback on that misdirection trap play that Minnesota still hasn't diagnosed. They had no reason to suspect it because Michigan hasn't used it. They picked it out of Johnny Robinson's playbook, right? Clayton rolls out. He's back to his 15-yard line. Throws to Wolfhawk at the 25, the 30, the 34-yard line, and dropped right there about the 33-yard line. Read close. Clayton wide to the left. B.J. Dickey looks at a 5-4-2 defense, and B.J. eats the ball on the 37-yard line. And 
made the tackle on B.J. at the College of Michigan 37-yard line. About it throws downfield, and it's intercepted by Minnesota's lineman, big number 70, Cunningham. He's down, and he fumbled the ball, and it's recovered down there, I believe, by Michigan. It was Reed. Well, that pass went from Dickey to Cunningham of Minnesota. He ran from the 50 back to the Michigan 38, and then he was hit. He fumbled the ball, and it was recovered by Larry Reed on the 41-yard line, and Michigan maintains possession, and I don't think either coach designed that play, Lendo. Down the counter direction again over the 50, down to the 45, the 40, and he's hit from behind on the 34-yard line. Rosie Smith, it's Smith, the fullback, into the ball game for Reed on that misdirection trap play again. Beautifully conceived this week in practice, well executed here this afternoon. Boy, the blocking up front there as Michigan's flow tends to go to the right, and then on the misdirection coming back in the trap, our Besnick opens up a nice hole on the linebacker because the tackle's allowed to come in, and he comes in shallow, giving Rosie Smith that time a chance to go right by him because, of course, the defensive man thinks the ball is going to the right. He's coming in from the right, right defensive tackle position. Mitchell wide to the right at the slot is Clayton. There's a delayed handoff to Wolfhawk, and he cuts away from one man, two men. He's hit from behind at the 26-yard line. Beautiful running there by Butch Wolfhawk. Boy, is he excited out there. Look at him, two on the Minnesota 26-yard line. Wolfhawk deep and read close. Wolfhawk takes from BJ. Gets a block. He has a first down, and he's down to the 23-yard line. Wolfhawk deep and Smith close. Under center is BJ Dickey, first and 10 at the 23-yard line. There he hands off in misdirection to Rosie, and that time Minnesota diagnosed it. Up into Rosie, right there at the 22-yard line. 24 to 14. The Wolverines have not picked up any points here in the third period, but they have picked up five first down. Right to the left is Mitchell. It's Wolfolk deep and Smith close. Underneath center is B.J. Dickey at the Minnesota 22-yard line. Almost too much count. B.J. is back. He can't find a receiver. He's going to eat the ball back on the 26-yard line, losing on the play about three and a half yards. He couldn't find anybody. B.J. rolled to the short sideline. The hash line on the eastern sideline was where the ball was spotted prior to the snap of the ball. B.J. took it and rolled towards the eastern sideline. He only had 18 yards to maneuver in. Mitchell Y. B.J. back for a pass on 13. He throws a swing pass out here too far to Wolfhawk. And Wolfhawk was all set to move, boy, I'll tell you. It was overthrown. And now with 4th and 13, we're going to have Mr. Brian Ozzie Virgil, the senior from Buchanan, who kicked a field goal 26 yards earlier in this ball game. In fact, that was the first score of the afternoon. From the 16-yard line, B.J. Dickey at the 33-yard line. It'll be a 43-yard attempt. It's placed, it's kicked, it's end over end. Is it? No, no good. Well, one out of two this afternoon. But for Brian Dickey on the season, that's two out of seven in field goals. Not exactly a glorious percentage mark. Michigan's offense is stunted here as Minnesota has done all the scoring that's been done here in the second half, capitalizing on a fumbled punt return and for his blocking for Carlson. Throws the pass downfield behind Jenkins incomplete. Harris is covering Jenkins down around the 34-yard line of Minnesota. Barber is three and a half yards behind Carlson. The quarterback Carlson drops right back. Throws a pass downfield and it's almost intercepted down there. Number 55, Dale Kite. Boy, would he love to intercept one. That Columbus, Ohio senior called Chunky turned around and couldn't believe it. He thought, oh my gosh, there it is. I'm the guy that hauled Woody Hayes' trash all through my sophomore and junior years a year ago and two years ago. Now I didn't haul Woody Hayes' trash anymore because he doesn't have any more trash. He isn't coaching down there in my hometown. Carlson drops back to his own 17-yard line. Cox's arm throws the pass complete, and he catches it, but he drops to the ground and horn right there at the 34-yard line, and he's just about two yards shy of the first down. The ball and hit the ground. It was complete, but it was two yards shy. So there goes Carter and Harden back to return Mr. Tommy Smith's punt. Smith has punted six times. The 23. He's up the 25. He cuts away at the 30. The 35 still on his feet at the 37-yard line. Over the 40 to the 43-yard line. And that's it. A beautiful return in there by a squirming, whirling dervish, Anthony Carter. There's a play on the play at the 37-yard line. Of 
ball back to Minnesota, a 15-yard penalty. The Gophers have it on their own 48, and Carlson is dropping back to his own 42. He throws a pass. It's caught by Bergwin at the Michigan 45. He goes out of bounds at the Wolverine 44-yard line. In case you're trying to catch your breath on just what happened while we were out getting a word from the gentleman who paid the rent for these ball games, Minnesota punted, right? 43 yards. Carter brought it back 20 yards. Wrong. He did all that, but it was nullified. On the punt, Michigan was detected holding. The original point of scrimmage was the Minnesota 33. Michigan detected holding 15 yards, moved it to the Minnesota 48. On the first and 10 from the 48, it was Carlson, the swing pass out to Borgwine. He has it now on the 44-yard line, second and two. There goes Borgwine in motion again. Now he's coming back out to this side, and they'll probably swing a pass to him as they did in the first half. There it is out to Borgwine. Wide open at the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 17-yard line. As we said, they did it in the first quarter three times. Michigan covered in the second quarter, but Michigan forgot it here in the third quarter because he went across formation. We talk about Bo Schembechler taking a page out of Southern Cal's playbook with that misdirection trap. Well, that was a play of... Uh, a play taken out of Southern Cal's playbook two weeks ago against Minnesota when they put a man, you remember in the Rose Bowl, if you saw it or were there, they put a man in motion, and then halfway across motion, he comes back the other way. That's what Borgwin does. No Michigan man's there to pick him up. He was wide open. Minnesota has it, first and 10 at the Michigan 16-yard line. Mark Carlson sets his team again. There goes Borgwin. Now this time they throw it to Borgwin again. He catches it again. He's trapped and dropped at the 13-yard line. There is Carlson rolling out to the right. He throws a pass. He was pressured in there, really pressured by Hutton on a safety blitz, and he didn't get He didn't get time to set up on that pass play, he being Mark Carlson. He was working in motion. Now he goes back the other way. Now Carlson goes out, and they're throwing the pass. It's incomplete. Boy, is Turgovac in there. Driving in from the nose guard position, and he made Carlson throw that ball long before he intended to throw it. And again, Minnesota was setting up that same situation. So now the Gophers, with the finest field goal kicker in Minnesota history, Paul Rogan, who is four out of seven on field goals in 1979. But boy, has this lad punched him out here in years gone by. He is leading Minnesota in field goals and extra points and total points. He's done it all. He will attempt one now. The lad from Farmington High School in Farmington, Michigan. Anhorn is kneeling at the 20. It will be an attempted 30-yard field goal from the hash line at the flagpole end of the field. You can visualize it. Tobin snaps the ball. Anhorn spots it. It's end over end by Rogan. And Minnesota has 17 points. Wait a minute. Off to the left. Off to the left. No good. It looked good from here, but the officials are down there, and they are calling them as they are, right down there on Canham's carpet. So for station identification over this, the very maize and blue missed field goal, and that wasn't Michigan's football network. 1050 WPAG, Ann Arbor. DJ hands off to Reed, up over the left side to the 21, 22, 23 yard line. Barreling his way, picking up four yards. Remember, the field goal attempt was from the 20. It comes back to the spot of the ball prior to the field goal attempt. That's all there is of the first 45 minutes of three quarters. 15 minutes to go and hang with us. This is going to be a great football game before it's over over this the Michigan Football Network. Ball deep and there's a pitch off to Wolfhawk around the right side and he can't get any blocking and he hits nothing. But Jersey's there at the 35 yard line. Should coming over there leading a massive attack defensively by Jay Dickey is under center. It's Wolf Hook deep and Reed close, and there is a drop back pass on his own 25 yard line. BJ throws it down there. It's caught by Wolf Hook at the 35. He can't break the tackle at the 38, and he's dropped right there at the 38 yard line on third and nine. Wolf Hook picks up four and a half. A downfield that's taken at the 27 yard line. He eludes one man. It's Bailey, and he's hit at the 31 yard line. 10 on their own 32. There goes Jenkins in motion. Now he's going back to the flat again. He's going to be open for the pass, and they're throwing to Jenkins. And he catches it and can't hold it out of bounds on the 46-yard line to the flat where he originally set up on out of the huddle. And this time Jenkins on the other side did the same thing. He came across five yards. And Carlson this time hands off to the tailback barber who was hit right there by a whole maze of maize pants and blue jerseys and the old wing maize and blue helmet. Right. He hands off this time to the tailback. And he breaks Lewis, breaks, and he's into the end zone. Lewis broke three tackles at the eight, the four, and the one. Minnesota is right back into contention. 20 right now to 24. 
seven minutes and 47 seconds remaining. This extra point is all important because remember, Rogan is one of the finest place kickers in the history of the Big Ten. Okay, Andrew is kneeling at the 10. Rogan attempting his third extra point, and it is good. It is good. Minnesota 21, Michigan 24, and we have eight minutes left in this great ball game from Ann Arbor over this, the Michigan Football Network. Standing in the ball game, Minnesota has just scored their second touchdown of the second half. They're right back into contention. Michigan 24, Minnesota 21. Rogan is all set here. Paul Rogan, number 13, is waiting for the referee's whistle. There it is. There's Rogan's kick, not too deep. It'll be taken by Ricks at the 15. No, Carter has it at the 20. He breaks at the 25 and hit at the 27-yard line. Carter and Ricks both together, and Minnesota is an aroused band of gophers right now. Boy, let me tell you, hang on to your kilohertz because this is anybody's football game. Michigan 24, Minnesota 21. Seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining. The ball rests 23 yards in from this to western sideline. Wide to the left goes Mitchell. Wide to the left as the slot is Clayton. It'll be Wolf up deep and Reed close and B.J. Dickey under center at quarterback. He's looking at a six-man front, a 6-2-3. There's a handoff to Wolfhawk, and he's hit and trapped right there for no gain at the 28-yard line. Back for a pass, and he's throwing the long bomb way over the head of everybody. The intended receiver down there was Tony Jackson. Clayton wide to the right. Wolfhawk is deep. The ball's at the 28-yard line. Wolfhawk takes it on the draw. Wolfhawk breaks the tackle. He's down to 35, down to the 40, still on his feet. He fumbles the ball, but it's recovered by Clayton at the 45-yard line, and that was a very precious nine yards for a first down, 19-yard run by the number one workhorse of Michigan, and the daubers of the Maze and Blue are up right now while Minnesota takes a timeout down to the playing field. A man was shaken up on that play. Well, what a football game, and it's all made possible by the University of Michigan. B.J. Dickey enters center at the 45-yard line. B.J. Dickey now hands off to the fullback, Reed, and he gets about two and a half yards to the 47-yard line before Howard makes the tackle. The I formation on second and nine on their own 47-yard line. There's Wolfhawk on isolation, cutting to the right. He has a first down to the 45-yard line. Beautiful running, great second and third efforts, great cutting in there by Wolfhawk. And remember, this turf was rained on yesterday before they put the tartan, uh, the, uh, tartan surface tight ends of the balance line. Wolfhawk deep and read close. B.J. Dickey under center. There's a snap. B.J. hands to the fullback, and the fullback read is down to the 41-yard line. They've gained a lot, but they only have a three-point lead. And there is Wolfhawk again. He's hit. He breaks the tackle. He's still on his feet. 35, 30, down at 25, 20, 50. Get by Marjorie Dillon. Wolfhawk electrifies the crowd. And he stops the game for Michigan as he just pulled his way in and out of the hands of would-be tacklers. And he moved down Cannon Scarpet like a penguin with a hot herring in his cummerbund to put a 41-yard touchdown run on top of his 58-yard touchdown run earlier in the ball game, on top of his 49-yard touchdown run the first time he carried the ball against Minnesota one year ago today against these same Gophers, and it's been Wolfhawk on top for the Maze and Blue, pacing this running attack that now has run up over 470-some yards on the ground. Kneeling is B.J. Dickey, the attempted extra point by Virgil. It's up, it's spotted, it's end over end, and it is good. Bo, Bo, George Patton, Schembechler scoring horn roars again. And in case you haven't heard that story, we're going to very briefly. You know, we always talk about Bo since, so oh, about 73 or 74, about Bo, George Patton, Schembechler. Artis Lewis and Jenkins deep, Ali kicks, and I believe it's going to go out of bounds again, and we'll have the same thing we had up at Michigan State last week, the same thing we had earlier in this ball game when Ali kicked out of bounds. In motion, and there he's looking, Carlson, and he's throwing the bomb, and it's caught out at the 43-yard line by Anhorn, and he's dropped right there, first down for Minnesota. Jolly knocks it out of the hands of Anhorn. Anhorn, the intended receiver at the Michigan 41. Mike Jolly's over there doing a beautiful job defensively. And the two slide backs, Jenkins and Borgwin. Borgwin in motion, and Carlson throws to Borgwin. He's open, he's alone, he's at the 50, the Michigan 45, and dropped at the Wolverine 43-yard line. It is. Here comes Jenkins in motion across formation, and he rolls out. Carlson throws the pass out here to, to Borgwin, and he's dropped right here at the 43-yard line. Okay, Mark Carlson at quarterback. Bob Eufer here at the microphone. 
Minnesota has the ball, third and seven on the Michigan 40 and a half yard line. Carlson back to the midfield stripe, throws the pass, and it's intercepted by Michigan. Intercepted down there at the 35. He lands it off this time to 29. That's Diggs. Diggs is hit at the midfield stripe. Greer intercepted the ball, and he knew he couldn't run with it, so he looked back and flipped the lateral just as if he's been doing that all his life. He flipped it off to Diggs. The second string defensive halfback who carried it like an offensive halfback all the way down to the midfield stripe. Lendo, that's got to give Curtis Greer a lot of satisfaction, and that displayed a lot of poise by that fifth-year man playing defensive tackle. Sure did, Bob, and it was a great play, and that's reminiscent. As you recall, because you've got such a good memory, and I hate to go back in the arcades, but that reminded me of the 47 team and some of the things they used to do. That's right, how well they used to. Johnny Wanger now in at quarterback. Rosie Smith at fullback. This is a passing quarterback into the offensive picture right now. There's a handoff to Rosie. And Rosie on the counter trap play. Picked up about three yards from the 49 to the 46-yard line. And I think some of the gusto has been taken out of the Gophers here as Michigan's Curtis Greer, who's known for his sacks and his great defensive play, reached up with that big paw of his. That's a 250-pound frame. And he stands six foot three performance by Wolfuck. I can't remember one man putting on a better display. And there, break the tackle. He's trying to, though, at the 43 yard line. He's got to be a bit tired, Lundo. How many times has he carried the ball, Jack? 21 for 185. 21 times for 185 yards. And actually, I believe, but Jack, of course, our human computer will have it. Michigan's got to be over 500 yards on the ground rushing, which will be close to the all-time record, which if I remember correctly, was against Iowa in 1969, just before Michigan came back for the big upset win over Michigan State, over Ohio State in 69. They ran up, I think, somewhere around 530 yards against Iowa in Iowa City. Two minutes of play executed here in front of a crowd of around 103, 104,000 fans. Oh, the referee drops his arm. And that means the clocks have started to wind. Up over the tight side here on the short sideline is Mitchell. We'll put deep and Smith close. There goes Mitchell across formation, in motion. And there is the handoff this time to Wolfhawk. And he's struggling, but he can't pick up much yardage. There about a two-yard gain. Up deep, and there's Wolfhawk with the ball. And they think he can get it, but Minnesota is just keying on Wolfhawk. Van Horn wide to the right. Thompson and Borgwin there. There goes Jenkins in motion, and the ball isn't snapped, but somebody's offsides, and I believe it was Van Horn. There goes Jenkins in motion across formation. Mark Carlson's back, cocks his arm in the 38-yard line. Throws the pass, it's complete down here to Curtis on the Michigan 42-yard line. He's stepped out of bounds at the 41, pushed out by Mel Owens, and the clock shows a minute and seven seconds. Minnesota has a Michigan with 25 first down. Michigan, eight completions in... 18 attempts here this afternoon with Mark Carlson. There he goes with Jenkins in motion. Carlson drops back to the midfield stripe. Right at the midfield stripe, he's hit, he throws. He's underthrowing throwing Anhorn because he was hit by Curtis Greer. Greer is playing a whale of a game. Lundo, if you had to pick two men, offensively and defensively. And again back to the midfield stripe. Cox's arm throws a pass complete to the Michigan 30-yard line to Bailey. He's hit right there at the 30. And remember, the series started at the 41, so I believe it will be another first down for Minnesota. Throws downfield, and it's inter no, sir, drop. Almost intercepted by Jolly. It would have been three interceptions on the afternoon. Mike Jolly has already had two. He went up into the air at the Michigan 16-yard line. The intended receiver down there was Bailey, and hit as he threw the ball was Mark Carlson. And if he is helped off the field, or no matter how he leaves the field, Lundo, that young man, number 12 for Minnesota, who has taken to the air 45 times and completed 23 of them, deserves a lot of credit for a great ball game. He's been the story of this second half. Uh, but when Michigan needed to score, they did. Minnesota's penalized back to their 45-yard line. A pass from Carlson out to Curtis. And Curtis has dropped out of bounds right in front of Smokey Joe Salem, the Minnesota coach. Right there at the Michigan, call it the 48-yard line. Right to the right is Anhorn. Here comes Jenkins in motion across formation in front of Barber. Behind Carlson is back to his own 42. Throws a pass way over the head of Barber, the intended receiver. With 31 seconds remaining, Mark Carlson has his team set. Third 28 on the Michigan 48. 
He puts Jenkins in motion, and then Carlson's back to his own 45-yard line, throws the pass. It's caught down there by Curtis, goes out of bounds at the Michigan 38-yard line. Jeff... Michigan flexes one of those defensive tackles, giving the four-man appearance to Carlson. The four-man are rushing Carlson. He throws a swing pass over the head of the intended receiver, Curtis, at the Michigan 35. The point of scrimmage was the 38. I believe that is... 21 seconds remaining on the clock, and that's all for Minnesota. That was a fourth down and 17. So Michigan now will run out the clock with 21 seconds remaining in the ball game. 45th time in history as Michigan is playing Minnesota for the 70th time in a series that goes all the way back to 1892. And here it is, 1979. And up over the ball comes Lojo. The line follows. Two tight ends in a balanced line. Split backs in the backfield. Wolf and Jackson. And Wangler is just going to run out the clock. That should be it. 15 seconds, 14 seconds. I don't believe there is any more time going to elapse as far as having a play get underway. The crowd signaling five, four, three, two, one. That's all there is. There isn't any more. That's 30 for now. The gun barks into the background. Michigan puts the cork on the little brown jug, and the Wolverines maintaining control of the ball game, although it was shaky in spots. The Wolverines. We're here today, they met an aroused band of enthusiastic gophers, and the Wolverines proved equal to the task presented by Minnesota when they came up and threatened the Wolverines two or three times, especially in the second half. But the Wolverines walk off with a 31 to 21 final score, and we'll be right back with a quick recap statistically over this, the Michigan Football Network. Okay, well, this was...